Hi, and welcome back to Dr. Donovan, Medicine Made Easy, the medical education channel for everyone. In this video, we're going to be covering key things that you need to know about an abdominal aortic aneurysm, which is also commonly referred to as a triple A. In this video, we're going to be covering five main things. First of all, we'll look at the definition of a AAA, we'll then look at symptoms as well as risk factors before moving on to discuss potential treatment options and finally covering information about the UK screening programme for AAAs. But before we get into the main section of this video, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for weekly medical education videos. So let's start off with the definition of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Well, a AAA is essentially a bulge or a swelling in the aorta, and that's the main blood vessel that runs down from the heart through the chest and the tummy. Now, most AAAs do not cause any problems. However, it can potentially get bigger over time and could burst or rupture, causing life-threatening bleeding. So it is important that it's detected at an early stage. Now, symptoms of abdominal aortic aneurysms vary. Now, typically AAAs don't cause any obvious symptoms and they're often only picked up during screening or tests that are carried out for other reasons. However, some people with a AAA do have some symptoms. These might include a pulsing sensation in the tummy, so the patient may describe a feeling a little bit like a heartbeat in the tummy. They may also describe tummy pain that doesn't go away, as well as lower back pain that doesn't go away. However, obviously, lower back pain can be caused by many other things. Now, if a AAA bursts or ruptures, it can cause severe symptoms. These can be sudden or severe pain in the tummy or lower back, as well as dizziness, sweatiness, pallor, and clammy skin. They can also have a very fast heartbeat, shortness of breath, as well as fainting or passing out. Now, if someone develops any of these symptoms and you're concerned about the AAA, especially if they have a known AAA, then you should call for an ambulance immediately. So now we've discussed symptoms, well, who is at risk of an abdominal aortic aneurysm? Well, a AAA can form if the sides of the aorta weaken and balloon outwards. It's not always clear why this happens, but there are things that increase the risk of it happening. Well, people at a higher risk of getting a AAA include all men aged 66 or over, as well as women aged 70 or over who've got one or more of the following risk factors. Now, these risk factors are things such as high blood pressure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, otherwise known as COPD, high blood cholesterol, a family history of AAA, as well as cardiovascular disease, such as heart disease or a history of stroke. Finally, if they've ever smoked or if they currently smoke. Now, if you're worried that you might be at risk of a AAA, then you should speak to your doctor. They may suggest having a scan, such as an ultrasound scan, and making healthy lifestyle changes to reduce your risk of a AAA. These would be things such as stopping smoking and eating a healthy diet and getting enough exercise. So now that we've covered a definition as well as symptoms and risk factors, let's move on and discuss potential treatments for an abdominal aortic aneurysm. And we're going to discuss treatments based on UK guidelines. In the UK, recommendation for treatment will depend on how big the AAA is. Treatment is not always needed straight away as the risk of a AAA of bursting can be very low. So when we talk about the treatment options, there are mainly three options based on size. So for small AAAs, which are classified as three centimeters to 4.4 centimeters across, ultrasound scans are usually recommended every year to check if it's getting bigger, and individuals are normally advised about healthy lifestyle changes to stop it growing. The next size up would be medium AAAs. These are AAAs that are 4.5 centimeters to 5.4 centimeters across. And in this case, ultrasound scans are normally recommended every three months to check if it's getting bigger, and individuals will generally be advised about healthy lifestyle changes again. Now, a large AAA is 5.5 centimeters or more, and in this case, typically surgery is recommended to stop it getting bigger or bursting. Again, this is going to depend on individual patients, and you should ask your doctor if you're not sure what size your AAA is. So let's talk about reducing your risk of having a AAA. Well, there are several things that you can do to reduce your chance of getting a AAA or help stop one getting bigger. These include things such as stopping smoking, and if you're interested in this, I've left some information 
information in the description box of this video. You can find out about Smoke Free, which is the NHS Stop Smoking service. You can also eat healthfully, so eating a balanced diet and cutting down on fatty food, as well as exercising regularly. In the UK, the aim is to do at least 150 minutes of exercise a week. Another important point is to maintain a healthy weight. So use the BMI healthy weight calculator that I've included in the description box of the video to see if you need to lose weight and find out how to lose weight safely, as well as cutting down on alcohol. Again, there is more information in the description box of this video. If you've got a condition that increases your risk of a AAA, such as high blood pressure, your GP may also recommend taking tablets to treat this. Now let's just finish off the video by talking about screening for AAAs. In England, screening for AAAs is offered to men during the year that they turn 65. This can help spot a swelling in the aorta early on when it can be treated. And the test typically involves a quick and painless ultrasound scan to see how big your aorta is. If you're a man over 65 and you've not been screened, you can ask for a test by contacting your local AAA screening service directly. In terms of screening for women, well, women aged 70 or over with underlying risk factors such as high blood pressure or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease may also benefit from an ultrasound scan. Again, you'll need to ask your GP for a referral as women are not currently routinely invited for scanning. For more information about screening for AAA, then have a look in the description box of the video. I've included useful links to the NHS website, which is the main reference source for this video. Now that brings us to the end of the video. If you did enjoy the video, you learned something new, then please do subscribe to the channel. Again, I produce weekly medical education videos. Please do leave me a comment if you did enjoy the video. I tend to reply to all comments where possible, and please give the video a thumbs up. Please do remember as well that this is a general medical education resource. It is not intended as clinical advice. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, bye. So that does bring us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly medical education videos, as well as liking the video and leaving me a comment in the comments section. I do try to reply to all comments where possible. However, I'm not able to give individual medical advice. Now I've also included some useful references and extra reading links in the description box below, as well as a disclaimer, since please do remember this is a medical education channel, not an individual clinical advice platform. I therefore can't give any individual interpretation of results. If you are concerned, please do speak to your own healthcare provider. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, bye.